encourage me to keep going and go ahead and make those mistakes because that was the only way that I was going to learn. Um, they always complimented me on my comments and my talks. Um, they said they understood every word I said, even though I didn't, like I said before. Um, and they said that my pronunciation was great and better than most people that had been there for years. So that made me feel good too. And if I was frustrated in expressing myself, um, I just really needed to consider how uh, far I progressed at that point. Okay. Same question to you, Brother Malaya. What did your family or congregation assist you? Well, I got lots of encouragement from the brothers here in this congregation and also from uh, the congregation that my mother attends in Ohio. And uh, my, my challenge was I would be afraid to say it in Spanish but then I gave two talks in, in Spanish, and I understood half of it, but I said another half. I, I didn't quite understand, but I, I, I kept practicing. I went back over it, and uh, then I learned it later on. And so I can, I can give a good witness in Spanish now. And uh, Marshallese, um, not so well. Uh, Yahweh, that means how are, how are you? Everybody says Yahweh. And uh, or jitik and jitik means little by little or so so. <laughs> so I mean I, I remember that much. And uh, my talks there were translated uh, from English into Marshallese. I have a translator. Okay. So I got lots of uh, encouragement from the brothers there in Spanish and also over in the South Pacific from the brothers here too. All right. Thank you for that, brother Milan. So the last question: uh, What blessings have you enjoyed, Sister Preston? Or really, it's just a blessing of Jehovah. Um, be, and I say that because being in a foreign language, it requires a missionary spirit. You use your physical, mental, and emotional strength. You have to be motivated. You have to endure. And you have to be self-sacrificing. And sometimes you need it all at one time. But Jehovah, uh, he gives you what you need to accomplish at that time. Um, another thing is to seeing the uh, faces of people light up when you speak their language was always nice. Um, the congregations forming was nice. The roar of applause at a baptism was, you can't even describe it. We really don't get that many people that get baptized. We usually just have the talk and then go to lunch. So when we have, you know, some people, it's just wonderful. And it just makes your heart rejoice and realize that the work you're doing really pays off in the end. That's great. All right, Brother Malai, same question. What blessings have you enjoyed? Well, the blessing I enjoyed is that when I was in the Marshallese, uh, the first assembly we were there, nobody got baptized. We had uh, the talk, and uh, then we went to lunch. But then the second time, uh, one person got baptized, and that was really joyous. And it was about 300 people. The first time we were there, we met at the Kingdom Hall for the uh, circuit assembly, and then we were able to get a hall rented and didn't have to pay for it, just had to pay the workers with the seats up. So I benefited from seeing these people way out in the middle of the ocean that are serving God on a small, tiny island, 31 miles long and a half a mile wide, out in service all the time. And it's interesting to go to a meeting for service and you sit on the floor or in the sand if you want to return visit. Uh, no, no chairs, just sit on the sand or snow and hot and sweaty. But uh, people would listen. Yeah, so. Uh, it was humbling, and I enjoyed going. I really did. The same in Spanish. Uh, the brothers received as well. Uh, we uh, rode to the ranch. We got the recommendation from the body here, and then it was forwarded there to Guam. And we, we, they recommended we serve on the island of Majuro, which we did. Uh, we were there for five months. Okay. Thank you all of you for the sharing those experiences.